Hey guys, Leon here from Hair God, and today in this video, we're going to be looking at amino acids and how amino acids play a crucial role in building healthy, strong hair. We're going to look, well, well, I'll give you an introduction to what amino acids are. We'll look at how they play the role in hair growth. We're going to look at the different sources. We're going to look at the different types. We're going to look at the side effects uh, before finishing off with a brief conclusion. Make sure to stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here and welcome to the Hair Guard YouTube channel. On this channel, we do tons of science-backed videos all about hair loss and how you can regrow healthy hair. If you are new to the channel, do consider subscribing. So into the video on amino acids. Amino acids are often described as the building blocks of protein. Around one fifth of the human body is made up of protein, which is an essential component of almost all of its biological processes. It makes sense then that the sufficient intake or poor absorption can lead to deficits which impact various processes. This includes a non-essential process, hair growth. In this video, I'll introduce amino acids and the important role that they play in hair synthesis and growth. I'll then outline a variety of amino acids, including the four that are most essential to keratin production, as well as discuss a few ways that you can get more of these essential amino acids into your diet. Now, in its simplest terms, amino acids can be described as organic compounds made up of even smaller compounds known as amines. Amines are made up of a lone atom of nitrogen and a non-binding pair of valence electrons, which together form the chemical bond of the amine. The other chemical compound forming amino acids is carboxylic acid, plus the side chain chemical group which gives each different amino acid its individual properties. Amino acids make up a large proportion of our tissue and muscles and give cells this their particular structure. They are essential to use for storing nutrients and facilitating their movement around the body. This means that they play an essential role in healing damaged tissue, skin, bones and hair. Now the importance of amino acids to our survival is reinforced against a backdrop of the industrialization of society and its consequences for human health. The majority of people in the world now live in urban environments which are affected by pollution caused by the burning of fossil fuels. These people consume heavily processed foods, including meat from hormone-fed cattle and heavy fertilized agricultural produce. They often also live in a culture which promotes the regular consumption of alcohol and smoking of tobacco. All of these factors reduce the capability of our bodies to fully absorb the nutrients that we eat. Just as serious is the actual processing of modern junk food, microwavable, canned and frozen products which have lost a good part of the nutrients that we need from them becoming in effect simply a supply of empty calories. All of this has led to a spike, particularly among older people, in diseases and health issues, and at the root cause by the body's inability to absorb enough vitamins, minerals and amino acids. These problems include unwanted weight gain, erectile disorders, arthritis, diabetes, hypertension, sleep disorders and even hair loss. So guys, we're now going to have a look at how amino acids can improve hair growth. As hair production and growth is not fundamental to our immediate survival, these nutrients are diverted away from hair follicles, causing reduced hair production and death of the follicle. When this happens, at a less dramatic level, the reduction in hair production and subsequent loss of hair is only noticeable over long periods of time, that is, years rather than weeks. Initial indications of an amino acid deficiency in hair production include dull and vapid hair growth. At present, the effects of amino acids on hair growth are understudy from various viewpoints. Initial results from various tests have shown that certain amino acid mixtures, when ingested, can significantly increase the rate of hair growth over periods as short as four weeks. Such encouraging findings have prompted further study into the effect of amino acids on various hair and skin related diseases. So now let's have a quick look at the different types of amino acids. There are around 250 different known types of amino acid of which there are 20 which occur in the human body. Of these, a small number are associated with hair growth. First, we've got arginine. arginine. Arginine is an important amino acid which helps to produce keratin. It helps improve the function of the body's immune system, which is an important factor in protecting against autoimmune diseases which affect the hair, such as adrenetic alopecia. Arginine may also play a vasodilatory role in ensuring that the follicle is well supplied with blood and nutrients from its supply capillary through the production of nitric acid, which triggers the dilation of blood vessels. 
It is also associated, along with other amino acids, in the repair of damaged tissue. Without arginine, this process can suffer with reduced hair growth as a further consequence. Thus, those with underlying health issues need to ensure they absorb an adequate amount of arginine in order to facilitate the treatment of hair loss. Also, we've got cysteine. Cysteine makes up about one fourth of the keratin protein and as such is a crucial amino acid when it comes to hair growth. It's made up of two cysteine molecules formed together. As such, the close link between these two amino acids, with cysteine being the more stable oxidized form, is obvious. This amino acid has been shown by various studies to reduce the symptoms of alopecia. It is also important for the production of glutathione, an antioxidant which protects hair follicles from oxidative stress. While this amino acid is naturally produced by the body, it can help to ensure that it is present in your diet in order to reduce the risk of any deficiency. And we've got methionine. Now, methionine plays an important part in the synthesis of procollagen, which is necessary to form collagen, another amino acid which strengthens the hair shaft. It is essential to the integrity of the basic structure of skin, nails, and especially hair. This amino acid is also another antioxidant which has been shown to reduce hair loss, and studies also suggest that it can help slow the thinning and graying of hair. As it isn't produced by the body, it's important to make sure your diet contains a good amount of methionine. We've also got lysine. Lysine is another amino acid which helps stimulate the production of collagen. Hair follicles need lysine in order to grow hair properly. And we've got glycine, and if you haven't guessed by now, collagen is a major component of a healthy hair strand, and glycine is another amino acid that helps to produce collagen. But aside from this benefit, glycine also plays an important role in the central nervous system, meaning that its presence reduces the, presence reduces the possibility of hair loss associated with nerve disorders. It is naturally produced by the body, but should also be found in a balanced diet. We've also got proline, and this is important in the production of collagen and also protects muscle tissue. Its other health benefits include wound healing, antioxidant reactions, and immune responses. And finally, we've got glutamine. Now, as with other amino acids on this list, glutamine is produced naturally by the body. In fact, it's the most abundant amino acid found within the body. However, production decreases as the body gets older. Now, glutamine plays a role in the immune system, but by middle age, it's producing quantities too small to effectively do so. By absorbing this amino acid from our food supply, we can help to reinforce the body's slowing production. So, now that we know that they could be effective at regrowing hair, we know the different types, we're now gonna have a look at the best sources of amino acids. Now, the good news is that there is a wide variety of amino-rich food sources, which we can use to ensure our bodies absorb enough to promote healthy hair. Good sources of arginine include nuts, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, granola, uh, soybeans, chickpeas, sesame seed oil, chicken, beef, fish, and dairy products. Cysteine can be found in good quantities in whole grains, broccoli, legumes, pork, chicken, and dairy products. Food sources, which include methionine, are nuts, zucchini, broccoli, eggs, and fish. Lysine is commonly found in pulses, nuts, legumes, red meat, chicken, dairy products, and fish such as salmon, cod, and sardines. Glycine is found in various fruits such as kiwi fruits and bananas. It is also found in kale, beans, cabbage, spinach, soybeans, dairy products, both red and white meat, and fish. And the best sources of proline are soybeans, legumes, spinach, broccoli, beans, avocado, asparagus, eggs, dairy products, and both red and white meat. It is important to source these amino acids in natural and processed food. A frozen, microwavable meal with various vegetables, fish or meat won't contain anywhere near the variety and quantities of nutrients as the same meal prepared from fresh ingredients. The less processed the food you consume, the more you benefit from it nutritionally. Now we've shown you some of the sources of food that you can get amino acids from, let's have a look at supplementation. Amino acid supplements are popular with those who fear that they may not be able to absorb an adequate amount of amino acids from their diet. There are many examples of amino acid supplements having been shown to have a positive effect in reducing hair loss. Cysteine supplements, for example, has been shown to be effective in the treatment of androgenetic alopecia in women when taken together with millet seed extract and vitamin B5. The German study focused on a group of women who took a 400 mg preparation of the three ingredients over three months. The researchers utilized phototrichograms to measure anagen hair rate. The goal was to see whether supplementation would increase anagen hair rate from abnormal to normal after three months and at their final visit at six months. 
as the results showed the women in the active supplementation group reached the desired endpoint, while those in the placebo group did not. As such, the researchers concluded that cysteine supplementation shows a positive relationship between the treatment and reduced effects of alopecia. What about side effects? Amino acids are not commonly associated with side effects, but there may be cases where absorption of too much of a particular compound may produce unexpected results. Despite the low risk, it is important to know that certain conditions can be worsened by their consumption and therefore should be avoided by certain groups. Arginine is considered generally safe but should be avoided by pregnant women, breastfeeding women, asthmatics, children, sufferers of herpes, hypertension, people who have recently had a heart attack and those who have recently had or are scheduled for surgery. Now, even in healthy individuals, the amino acids may cause abdominal discomfort, a gout allergic response or airway inflammation. And what about reacting with medicines? Well, possible interactions include anticoagulants and antiplatelet drugs, blood pressure drugs, diabetes drugs, isoproteranol, nitrates, water pills and Viagra. You should consult with your doctor if you're on any of these medications or if you have taken herbs or other supplements before you begin arginine supplementation. Now, cysteine is also generally to, uh, usually considered safe, however, it should be avoided by pregnant women, breastfeeding women, asthmatics, hemophilics, uh, those who have recently had or are scheduled for surgery. And again, the most common side effects are increased consumption. The most common side effect of increased consumption or supplementation is nausea, but you should be aware that cysteine can trigger false positives in the nitroprusside test for ketone bodies used for diabetes. And cysteine may also negatively interact with insulin and monosodium glutamate, so speak with your physician prior to supplementation. And then with methionine, it's also generally considered to be safe in small amounts. Consuming large amounts in your diet can cause death and it should be avoided by children, pregnant women, breastfeeding women, then people with acidosis, atherosclerosis, liver cirrhosis, hepatitis, schizophrenia and Parkinson's. And similar to the other amino acids mentioned, supplementation can cause gas and bloating and general abdominal discomfort. Now it's clear that amino acids play an essential role in hair growth in the production of keratin, collagen, protecting the hair follicle and helping its supply of blood and nutrients. It's also evident that we must source a number of these amino acids in our diet through food or supplements in order to re reduce hair loss and stimulate new growth. But even further, we can avoid lifestyle choices which reduce the absorption of amino acids. These include avoiding polluted air, smoking, alcohol consumption and highly processed food. And while this may not be the root cause of your hair loss, there's no doubt that improved amino acid intake and absorption will benefit your scalp, hair and overall health. So guys, that's what we wanted to share with you on amino acids. If you have any questions about amino acids, let us know in the comments below. Make sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.